This is a video response to the Pedro Cortez challenge. What am I talking about? Well, recently Pedro Cortez posted a review, a written one, of the Super Robot Chogokin Weiss Ritter. Weiss Ritter? Something along those lines. And in it he mentioned the fact that the figure could readily stand on one leg and dared us to find a mech who could do the same and, you know, see how long it actually stays up. Well, to that, I can only say one thing, and that is, Sir, I say, Sir, I accept your challenge. I have here the, in my possession, the rather unfortunately named Big Duo from the equally unfortunately titled anime, Big O. It was released by Bandai in 2001. Shoot, it doesn't stand so well on the cloth. No touching in the back here. Demonstrate this. This is a Walmart receipt. Because I do need to station a little bit further off. But yeah. Whee. Can you see that? No touching, no touching. No touching there. No touching anywhere. But yeah, basically the extent of this uh, challenge is keeping Big Duo on his feet for, I said 25 minutes, but in reality it'll be whenever this video runs out, if it runs out sooner or until he falls over. At any rate, um, Big Duo, put out by Bandai in 2001. This mech is piloted by... Over to the first section of nuts. Ah, here he is. Michael Zabok, aka Schwartzwald. Yeah, regular uh, pretty guy here. A reporter who got horribly, horribly disfigured in a fire and decided he was going to start digging up mechs to, uh... I don't know what the heck he was doing, but, you know, in the same vein as Batman, whenever somebody gets horribly disfigured, they become a criminal mastermind slash supervillain. A la Joker, a la Two-Face, a la... Mr. Freeze, a la... You know, basically anybody, but, you know, it's also just comics in general. Let's face it. Now, the figure did not originally come with this. Uh, the original release came with a Roger and a um, Angel, both of which had nothing to do with the mech. By the way, I'm going to also toss out this um, custom Gof Plamo that I previously reviewed, just because I'm not sure what the extent of the challenge is, if I was supposed to also replicate the pose, or just the fact that it stands up on its own is good enough, but... This is the pose as I believe it was uh, portrayed. Unfortunately, I can't be 100% sure, but because I didn't see the full photo, and I also don't have the back portion for his sword at the moment. I'm a klutz, we know this. Life goes on. But um, to make sure that I'm not rewinding the same five seconds and doing a continuous loop, like in, say, the speed movies, to pull a fast one here, um, and also because I just don't feel like leaving my camera running for so long and not doing anything, I will be reviewing several figures for my normal viewing audience. Ones that I probably wouldn't have done otherwise. Including the DC Universe Classics Deathstroke, which I bought loose and is missing some accessories, which is why I haven't reviewed him. I'll be complaining about this here. Cosma from the SH Figure Arts line. I'm going to quickly mention the fact that I reviewed this guy in my Scare Viewer channel that I mentioned having like ages ago and haven't really done anything with, but I will probably be start posting horror movie reviews on that soon. And obviously, this Mezitz, Wolfman Mezitz from the recent movie, 
where he has a review up there, and I'm also going to talk about some of the fast food toys, but, um, also, you know what, I'm going to review this thing of floss, but before any of that, I feel obliged to point out that Toys R Us, currently, the website, not the physical stores, currently has a clearance on some of their Green Lantern stuff, or a sale, I mean, it's 30% off, like, Pull it up, make sure things still running. So I feel awfully foolish otherwise. Yeah. But you know how we always complain about how the Green Lantern classics are 18 bucks at Toys R Us. Um, right now they're marked down to 1260, I think. And then their Movie Masters stuff, the stuff that's actually in, is marked down to, I think it was like 1050. I can't remember. I ordered a bunch of stuff off that last night. Meant to um, do something about it, just to let people know that, yeah, it's available. Um, only downside is they don't have, like, all the figures from the Wave. I mean, Kyle Rayner wasn't up there. Uh, I've been sore. They had it first, but later on he sold out. Ended up just skipping, picking up most of the Wave. But I did pick up uh, two copies of Mash Low just to sort of bulk out my Sinestro core, and then also all the existing movie masters, because, I don't know, it's just the um, Collect and Connect is sort of cool looking. I've seen some of the unofficial file images of it. I will post a link to that down below. I'm sure most of you have probably already seen them, though. But yeah, that's uh, kind of neat. Of course, the Thundercracker from the Generations line I meant to pick up. I did pick up as well as the Sergeant Cup because they were running a buy one get one half off as well for the Transformers stuff or at least some of it Which includes the Dark of the Moon stuff and apparently also the Generations so well, that kind of worked out by the way This is all just one solid continuous thing not pausing so if I flub if I mispronounce something if I say something incredibly stupid um, it'll probably be on the camera. Yeah. Oh, not trial. At any rate, let's start by reviewing the dental floss. Now, we all know that hygiene is very, very important. You'll notice that this has specks of chocolate on it. Um, keeping the container in pristine order is not as important to me, but... Floss, it's a very important part of your daily health regimen. Now, I prefer having a much more waxen variety, just because, you know, the crap can be a little bit sharp. But, I mean, this is a so-so sort of um, waxing or whatever. Wax on, wax off, whatever. And, of course, it's mint-flavored, so this is what I use the floss with in case, you know, I ever ran a question to answer a segment and somebody asked, what do you use the floss with, WTR? slash Scarecrudel, and the answer is the Johnson & Johnson Reach Mint Waxed Floss. I tried one of the other flavors, did not like it as much. But yeah, I just reviewed a thing of floss. Now, um, on to the SH Figure Arts Cosma. Um, you'll probably remember that in the news and updates two or three or four months ago, can't remember. I mentioned I'd be reviewing this guy at some point in the month. I have not. Um, I don't know. Again, it's something of a disappointment, especially given the fact that I could have waited and gotten him quite a bit cheaper. Uh, mine has this little stupid mark on it where the um, sort of weird-ass defect where I'm not sure if it's just a discoloration. I'm not sure if the plastic didn't come off well from the mold, but that's not my biggest issue with this. My biggest issue is the fact that, you know, for this line, this, this comes with virtually nothing. It only gets three alternate faces and then an alternate hand and an alternate arm segment as well as an attack thing. I mean, compare that to the Ace I previously reviewed, or, I don't know, any random review from the series, and you'll probably find that the One Piece figures are hogging all the accessories. Leaving us with Constipated Face Kazuma, Open Faced Yelling Kazuma, the standard Blank Face Kazuma, 
and then this part here, although technically this is also another hand because this thing is removable. So it's also an open and then a closed fist. But we get the stupid arm segment and then this attack. Now, I mean, for one thing, given the fact that this is the same price as the other figures in the line, it's kind of annoying, although I understand that they want to sort of cut costs and save corners on figures that might not be as financially successful as the One Piece figures, or even the DBZ figures for that matter, but all the same, kind of annoying. If they did do it right, the things that I would have wanted to see, especially instead of just a different arm segment or arm portion, would be able to just pop this whole arm portion off. And then have a arm just like this for the other side for his um, non-alter mode, as well as the normal hair, because this is the hair that he sports while he's getting ready to kick somebody's ass with his alter. But yeah, if I ever get around to actually posting the review for this, um, I'll explain all about the alters and you know how the show works. But um, if I could compare it to anything, I'd say it's a bit like the X-Men that we have groups of mutants running around and fighting, and then you have a group of mutants sent to sort of balance the things out, except for that group is ostentatiously evil, but enough about that. Deathstroke, the term or Slade the Terminator, Deathstroke the Terminator is technically the real term for him, but, you know... The moniker of the Terminator is usually tossed after that. Um, this was a figure that I picked up loose, I think it was like a year ago, maybe. Unfortunately, at the time, I didn't realize that he didn't come with the ammo strip, and that's why I haven't reviewed him, because it's just technically incomplete. Plus, I was also waiting in case I got the unmasked version, at which point I'd probably just toss the ammo strip on him and then have the unmasked version without. A very awesome figure, he's got a sort of um, heavy amount of sculpting stuff that sets him apart from the, you know, sort of general looking characters in line, where a lot of these superheroes just have more of a tights and spandex look and everything. In particular, we actually do have some real paint variation here on the sort of chainmail portions. Not as much on the regular armor. It's hard to tell if it's just natural shadowing or actual paint. But like on the reissues that um, Matlock WK was pointing out, you definitely do have a different color plastic for the hands as opposed to the arms. Mostly because they just use straight plastic molded into a certain color as opposed to using paint like they would for the rest of the um, glove area or gauntlets. Kind of sucks, kind of is a shame. Then, of course, it's a thinner, more malleable material just because the hand needs to accommodate the weapons. Um, besides the sword and pistol, originally came with a bow staff, which I believe is the same one that came with the Robin from the wave, the Tim Drake Robin. A very nice wave, it was the Solomon Grundy wave. Wish I was collecting back then, but I was not. Yeah, really cool all around. The pistol, of course, can go back into the holster, which is really nice. And you can get both uh, poses where he's going to be drawing his pistol or poses where he's going to be drawing his sword fairly easily. And sometimes I'll just pose him with one hand on the sword. Just a little tricky to get the joints going the right way, though, but when you have it, you have it. kind of cool. Sword itself is pretty neat. Reminds me of the one that was used for Ares in the Marvel Legends series. The Hasbro variety. A uh, quick run through of articulation. We have a point here at the wrist. Point at the elbow. Rotation at bicep. Ball jointed shoulder, full range. Ball jointed neck. An up K upward motion, but not spectacular, then get a down motion. Ab crunch, waist joint, standard um, leg, but somewhat impeded by the fact you have a holster on one side, a scabbard slash sheath on the other. 
point of rotation here at the upper thigh. It's nice because the belt makes it less noticeable. Point here at the knee, then at the ankle we have a point with a very mild pivot. Of course, if you're familiar with this character, you'll notice his iconic mask here where one side you don't see the eye. Uh, it's not a defect of any sort. The character had one of his eyes shot out by his ex-wife. Not even the reason why she was his ex-wife. She was already divorced from him long before then. For reasons I won't cover right now. Then, of course, you have this really cool-looking um, belt that's just tossed around his shoulder for no reason. I'm not sure what that's about. And then if you look, you know, it's a different material again for the um, holster. It's the same sort of molded plastic, but it's a much darker shade, which is kind of cool and funky at the same time. They etched in little detailing. All around, a really, really nice figure, and I wish I had picked him up during the original release. But I don't think, I think it was 2006 or 2007 when I wasn't collecting. So if I was, definitely somebody I probably would have ended picking up. Although honestly, wasn't always the hugest fan of him. Now, um, if you guys follow the fast food toys, I know a few other YouTubers post videos of reviews of, um, you know, some of the figures that come out. Uh, recently, McDonald's had a promotion for the Pokemon toys. Uh, really decent looking ones. Um, they were a pretty good size, and then in addition came with a card. Only problem with it was I couldn't get my hands on any of them. Every time I hit up the ones closest to me, they were out. They had a ton of the girls' toys, but none of the boys' toys. Now, why is Pokemon a boys' toy versus a girls' toy in the first place? Uh, second of all, I imagine a lot of girls were picking up the Pokemon toys. I mean, Pokemon is a very gender-neutral franchise. I'm not sure why they decided to opt and go that route, because it's frankly, it was really annoying in addition to being baffling. And it resulted in a annoying shortfall, which meant I picked up some Kung Fu Panda stuff instead. But yeah, I'm starting to get bored of this, so I'm just gonna move him into a slightly different pose. Oh look, he's still standing. I'd push um, Big Duo back a bit, but I'm worried he'd probably bump into the back here. I will flick him though. Look, I'm tapping this figure. So yeah, he's freaking stable. Now in case you're wondering why he's missing half his propellers, uh, this figure, which I did pick up quite a while ago, was on a shelf next to my uh, spooky town. Um, the really cool one that had the, I forget what it was called, I think it was, it had like a bunch of like ghost skeletons and ghosts around this bonfire, and when you click the thing, bonfire would light up and they'd all spin around it. Uh, really, really awesome, but unfortunately, some time ago, I was rearranging a bookshelf, right? So I was taking all the books off it, I had this huge stack of books on the table next to that. I left to go do something else, and then, you know, as luck would have it, uh, what was it, four or five months later? Yeah, I think it was like four or five months later, the books suddenly fell with a massive crash and both wrecked part of his hand, as well as completely devastated the Spooky Town collection. And yes, I did say four or five months later. It wasn't four or five minutes. You see, I left it there, and I just didn't ever get back to it. So, uh, totally my fault there. I guess it sort of had, had it coming on a karmic level, though. It really sucks, because it's a figure I had for a while, and I really liked him. Although, obviously did not take the best care of him, because he was close to a window, and you've got all this massive discoloration on his turbines here, which sucks. He also has optional wing replacements, which were in with my Power Rangers blasters and accessories, I believe. Um, I knew they wouldn't fit with this, and as well as, you know, I didn't feel like finding what I'd do with that, so... I did, of course, just leave that stuff out. But yeah, um, one smashed clear off, the other one kind of broke, and the plastic around was weak, so I was adjusting it. The yeah, portion on the outside kind of snapped, and the um, propeller flipped out. 
or propeller finger. I do intend to ultimately go back and try to make a repair if I do have the piece around somewhere, which I presumably do. I mean, sure, I could always just buy another one, but I really don't want to. I mean, I've had this one for a while. He does have some mild sentimental value, even though, you know, there's no real memory connected with him other than being one of those few figures that I bought. But I wasn't really buying figures just because I thought that, you know, this character really appealed to me and stuff, or the mech did. I mean, you know, kind of a bummer. But yeah, um, currently for McDonald's, they have the Star Wars toys in. I replaced um, two of the duplicate toys that I previously had because I ended up getting stuff from older promotions those times that, you know, I was picking up just Happy Meals on the way back from someplace or whatever. Just because two Happy Meals does fill you up, then you get two toys practically for free. But I ended up exchanging for some lightsabers. And then of course I got two of these lightsabers today, which unfortunately do not light up. But if you check out this, when you have the lightsaber in here for Anakin's, or is this Obi's? I can't remember. You press the button, it lights up, and it actually gives off a pretty huge amount of illumination, which is really, really awesome. Uh, the Obi-Wan, the purple lightsaber, not as impressive, just flicks out like those cheap toys that you buy and fight with and you end up wrecking in less than a day, as I have done several times. Also, don't be fooled by the color. In the words of Chris Tucker, this was the manliest color they had left. Qui-Gon, sorry. Mace Windu, of course, was quite the badass from the, um... Star Wars films, he did end up killing... No, I'm not going to spoil it. Although, everybody saw that movie, didn't they? Yeah, he killed Jango Fett. And Jango Fett, right before then, killed a giant space monster with one blaster shot. So, he killed a thing, guy who killed a giant monster, which paradoxically means that he's greater than that giant monster. Yeah, the, the logic doesn't really work, but, you know, bear with me. Other thing I did, I ended up picking up the Iron Hide from the Burger King Transformers 3 promotion. I was between Iron Hide and Bumblebee in, and although I didn't really want either character, I just felt, you know, I'm buying food here anyway. I might as well just pick up a Transformer. And um, I thought he had voice, but he does not have voice. Instead, he just blasts the logo again. And this is the Autobots logo, although mine is either damaged or something, so the logo isn't as clear or anything. And of course, it's just sort of blurred out on one side as well. It's kind of weird. I mean, it wasn't like it was a display model or anything. It was fully bagged and everything, so I'm not sure what's up with that, but the Shockwave definitely displays a lot clearer. I'm really hoping to pick up Optimus, and then also Megatron, probably Starscream. If they do ever get them in, I'll probably check back in a week or so. But yeah, um, yeah. He's been sitting here for, what's it been? Around 23 minutes, with uh, one leg in the air. Again, just to show that nothing fluky is going on here. Ah, this time I'll... Shove a blaster behind him. Ooh. There's no touching against the wall. The um, backdrop does come close, but not the wall. It's also not the, just the curvature of this, because the curvature of this is kind of wonky. I mean, I could push him back a bit further just to demonstrate that I'm not doing anything fluky with this uh, thing, but I actually had him in a similar pose with the left leg on my um, table by my... Where the heck did I put him? I think it was the bedstand table that I have, and he managed to hold the pose on his left leg for, um, was it like two or three hours? And that only broke because I picked him up and moved him from it, and then... Goofed around with him a bit, started to film this, realized I couldn't get the pose right right away, and then 
I ended up uh, getting the pose fixed and then popping him here. Just because, again, this isn't as even as a normal desk thing because it's got um, an extra piece of paneling on the front. And again, not as much space to work with. That's not cheating, though. I mean, it doesn't make for a perfect thing. I should probably should just filmed him on what I knew to be a flat surface and just focused on the various other flat surfaces to prove the power of this mech here. Power of Big Duo. One of these bigs has got to go. But yeah, in the first appearance, he had him wrapped up like a whole mummy or whatever as well, and then Big O blasts um, his rifles and stuff, or his little guns and stuff, at, and then catches on fire and reveals the other Mega Deus underneath. We also just push him back just to. Yeah, there's no fluky business going on here. This is all just natural posing. Oops, now he falls. But that is quite a jostle, so... His defense, he received some rather heavy jostling. Not just a poke, or not just a bump, but a heavy jostle. See, just a poke, he does go back into place. Poke, poke, poke. Poke, poke, poke. Oop. Yeah. So yeah, um, this... Definitely solves the dare because, you know, these things have been posed here for quite some time. Held in place. Mild jostling. Not a whole lot. I'm not sure what he defined as a bump when he mentioned that he bumped into his figure and it didn't fall over. I imagine I probably felt that. So whatever point I was trying to make, I assume is now made and this video will be posted I'll be uploading it tonight, and then obviously overnight video will become available, and sometime tomorrow I'll post this in response to his challenge. But technically it wasn't so much a challenge, as it was a dare and whatever. But yeah, this has been a discussion on the SH Figuarts Cosma from the anime Scryd. Love that anime. A look at the DC Universe Classics Deathstroke, which I bought loose and is missing his ammo strap. Some talk about some McDonald's and Burger King toys, naturally. No Wendy's toys, because I don't eat at Wendy's. And then, of course, a brief look at these two guys. The custom gof who you know, because I reviewed, and the big duo who may get a big review sometime down the road. Actually, I really love this figure. But yeah, until next time, folks.